Hello and welcome back. So this is the concluding part for diabetic nephropathy. In the last uh, lecture, I told you about the uh, pathogenesis of the chronic complication of diabetes. And the diabetic nephropathy comes in the microvascular complication of diabetes mellitus. And we discussed that how the advanced glycation and products, they are causing the uh, various downstream effects causing the different complication of diabetes. Now we come to the uh, topic of this lecture that is morphology of diabetic nephropathy. So in diabetic nephropathy where the kidneys are involved, basically three lesions are seen. First is the first are the glomerular lesions, lesion, lesions in the glomeruli. Then second are the, uh, the vascular lesion, the seen in the afferent efferent arteriole and in the capillaries. Uh, then third are the uh, pyelonephritis which is the inflammation of the interstitium and tubules of the kidney and the uh, pyelonephritis in the diabetes it is specially associated with necrotizing papillitis this is important for the mcqs so let's see the different uh, morphologies which we will see so first are the lesion of the glomeruli this is the first lesions and uh, i told you in the last lecture that uh, due to ages uh, the advanced glycation end products there is increased in the deposition of the uh, basement membrane material so that results in the capillary basement membrane thickening and uh, this can be well demonstrated by electron microscopy so you see that uh, in the, the structure of the glomerular uh, filtration barrier there is on the inner side there is the capillary endothelium these are the spindle shaped cells then followed by this uh, glomerular basement membrane and then lastly there are the these are the visceral podocytes the so there will be thickening of the basement membrane so this is thickened in case of diabetic nephropathy in addition to this uh, there is uh, mesangial widening and in the later stages even the basement membrane which is surrounding the renal tubules it also gets thickened so there is thickening of the capillary basement membrane and later on thickening of the tubular basement membrane as well next morphology is the uh, diffuse mesangial sclerosis so due to the various growth factors which are releasing uh, due, uh, due to the interaction between the advanced glycation end products and their receptors uh, that causes the increased fibrosis also so there is increased in the extracellular matrix of the mesangium and all this material uh, that, that is increased in the glomeruli that is pass positive so pass positive material uh, is seen in the glomeruli and the later stages this increased matrix it uh, takes the appearance of a, of nodules so these nodules are formed in the glomeruli and uh, uh, this nodal appearance is known as nodular glomerulosclerosis and uh, these lesions are known as chemistin wilson nodules and the disease is known as chemistin wilson's disease this is very important asked in viva and mcqs and these nodules they are oval and they are oval in shape they are hypocellular they are they don't have any cells in between the nodules and they are generally seen peripheral in the location and due to mesangiolysis there is also dilated capillaries which are seen next to these uh, peripheral nodules so these are these are the very important and uh, characteristic lesion which is seen in the diabetic nephropathy and um, these uh, these nodular lesion they are uh, usually seen along with the uh, accumulation of the proteinaceous material in the capillary loops and that are known as the fibrin caps this is a misnomer actually because that, that is not fibrin that is proteinaceous material but they are known as fibrin caps and they are seen surrounding the Cap, uh, the capillary loops then also this proteinaceous material accumulate, accumulates between the uh, parietal epithelial layer and the bowman's capsule in that case it is known as capsular drop again important for the mcqs and viva and in the arterioles there is seen hyalinosis that is uh, deposition of the proteinaceous material in the wall of the efferent and afferent arteriole so all these lesions uh, let's see the diagrams to understand these morphologies so first is the thickening of the basement membrane. I told you that it is better appreciated in the electron microscopy. So you can see that the basement membrane, capillary basement membrane is uh, thickened. So again here, this is the thickened glomerular basement membrane. 
and also there is increase in the mesangial matrix so all this uh, homogeneous hyaline hyaline material this is the increase extracellular matrix this is the past tense slide and it is showing the hyalinosis of both the afferent as well as efferent so here you can see this uh, pink color uh, protein proteinaceous material deposition this is hyaline arteriosclerosis and here this is a picture from the robins and it shows these there's the other tubules and this tubule they have got this thickened basement membrane this is hnd stain slide showing this these uh, oval shaped nodules <coughs> these are the kimmelstein wilson nodules so you should remember these uh, important morphological points here in this picture this shows this capsular drop so this this is a proteinaceous material de uh, deposited in the capillary loops and here it is deposited between the in the bowman's capsule this is the capsular drop this is the fibrin cap again <clears throat> this is the capsular drop drop and the fibrin cap and all these lesions they ultimately they will cause the ischemia of the kidney the kidney uh, has a, a granular and uh, scarred appearance so uh, this is in the gross picture and the cortex is thinned out here can show some cortical cyst <clears throat> when there is pyelonephritis and the tubules ultimately they will get atrophied so all these uh, morphological events they cause the ischemia of the kidney leading to tubular atrophy and the interstitial fibrosis so all this will ultimately cause the renal failure the end stage renal disease and uh, <clears throat> another important morphological feature is the presence of acute and chronic pyelonephritis which is uh, the inflammation of the interstitium and the tubules and um, it, uh, the acute pyelonephritis it is associated with <clears throat> papillary necrosis so this is important in case of diabetes uh, and this papillary necrosis can also be seen in some other conditions of an asked in the viva the conditions are sickle cell anemia obstructive uropathy then analgesic or alcohol use so you should remember these points and lastly when uh, there is the diabetic nephropathy there is mesangial widening there is uh, uh, because of that there is also podocytopathy the podocytes they can detached and there is uh, increase in the protein secretion uh, so initially it manifest as microalbuminuria so there is excretion of 32 300 mg per day of protein in the initial stages and this is most important to diagnose the beginning of diabetic nephropathy and there are various sensitive strips uh, like micral strips which are used to uh, detect microalbuminuria so in that uh, people who are having chronic diabetes they will get this test done uh, often to assess the uh, onset of diabetic nephropathy and in the treatment uh, the, the glycemic control is important and uh, since in diabetes the renin angiotensin system is also activated so the ace inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers they are also important and to summarize uh, then in diabetes there is hyperglycemia or glucotoxicity that causes the formation of the advanced glycation and products they bind with their receptors and also certain uh, non receptor mediated mechanisms are there that will cause the thickening of the glomerular cap uh, capillary basement membrane increase in the mesangial matrix ultimately the sclerosis of the glomeruli glomerulosclerosis formation of these nodules which are known as clemelson uh, Kimmelstein Wilson nodules there is glomerular expansion that will cause the disruption of the podocyte and effacement of the podocytes will cause the <clears throat> protein excretion initially manifest as microalbuminuria very very important to know then also there is thickening of the tubular basement membrane and uh, in the arterioles there is hyaline arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis there is deposition of the hyaline material in both the afferent and efferent arteriole then there is um, the afferent arteriole dilatation it will initially cause the hyperfiltration and this hyperfiltration it will further cause the increase of the mesangial matrix and uh, widening of the mesangium <clears throat> all these factors they will ultimately cause the renal ischemia 
and then leading to tubular atrophy and interstitial fibrosis and ultimately the scarred nephrons also there will be uh, presence of pyelonephritis in the kidney so uh, this all these factors will cause the end stage renal disease in case of diabetic nephropathy so this was all about the pathogenesis and morphology of diabetic nephropathy any questions they are most welcome in the comment section thank you very much